Hi folks, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I did this built-in unit for our coffee machine and loads more storage along with it. And this one is a paid partnership with B&Q and their range of a Bauer EXT cordless tools and I tried to feature as many of those as possible in this build so stick around and we'll make a start. Right, all of our goodies are now here. Uh, always like to have some new toys to play with. So I'm hoping that we can make our way through most of these tools um, throughout the project we're doing. There's a whole range, um, way more than what's here, and even a garden range as well. But we'll come back to them in more detail later on. For, to start with, we need to look at the design of the project, some of the components, whilst I get these batteries on charge. Okay, so we're in the kitchen. I'll give you a bit of an outline of what the plan of action is. Busy household, cluttered worktops. That's what we're trying to solve. Uh, and there's certain things which will go into this new unit, but the main thing is the coffee machine. And the coffee machine takes up quite a big footprint on the worktop there. And the plan is to house it within this uh, boxed in section here. We've got a couple of these 150 mil larder units and they are fine but it was a bit of an afterthought. The plan is to take those out and build something custom which will fit in this space. Which means moving the fridge probably means emptying it. Right, now we're at a point where we can enlarge this opening. Uh, it was a 150 unit before. We're just about gonna be able to squeeze in the, the machine and have an even reveal on each side. And the old post is in here too from the old door. So we're gonna cut that out. First job is to cut the vertical line. That's pretty heavy going for a little tool like that, but it flew through most of it. Uh, even that bigger post that was there, going in from both sides with the plunge bit, uh, the plunge blade worked really well. So I think we've got just enough space that we can get the coffee machine in there. It's gonna be tight. I made a right mess of the kitchen. I think we should get on with making the cabinets. So the first job is gonna to be to mark out our panels on here. We've already got our height set by um, getting it cut in store. Now we need to cut it up into the various components of the sides and the back. Um, so we're gonna be using the circular saw for that. Still plenty of juice left in that after the multi-tool, that's good. Now we could just mark up with a pencil and freehand it, or again, we could just um, clamp on a guide rail and kind of go against there. But what I've done is I just made up a quick a uh, rip jig, which is just two pieces of timber, and I will be featuring that in another video. Now the distance of the blade to the edge of the base is different on every saw, so you wanna make one of these up for whatever saw you have, and that will allow you to get that really clean straight cut. Mm -hmm. 
I have just noticed this has actually got a laser guide as well, so it would be a lot easier to freehand than some sorts. There we go, a lovely new saw blade, so nice clean edge there, and they tear out. That is the two sides cut, now we just need to cut a back piece. Right, I managed to find some 18 mil off cut that we had. So I'm just gonna be cutting that for our top and bottom. Right, assembly time. Now, as we've got two cabinets to build, uh, the first one, the main coffee unit, uh, I'm gonna just gonna glue and screw in a conventional way and for that one I'll be using the thicker 18 mil base. So that's because when we come to fix the draw liners to it, they will need to be base fixed, I think, because uh, we're a little bit tight on size. Now it might be a good chance to fit draw slides to it before we assemble it as well, but because we're not quite sure what's going where, I'm gonna have to hold off. Plus the little impact driver is nice and stubby, so we should be able to fix in still within the cabinet. We could use a drill bit and a separate countersink or you can kind of get a countersunk bit like this and that should just speed things up a little bit. If you are building a cabinet where the end panel is visible, then really want your fixings to be all from the top or you could do biscuit joints or some other hidden joinery. Pocket holes you can use on the top section and the bottom, screwing in sideways into these pieces. So it means your end side panel is completely free of any fixings. Now 12 mil material doesn't work as well with pocket holes. It's much more suitable for 18 mil, like three quarter inch material. Uh, but you can just about get enough bite with the 12 mil, with the shorter screws. Uh, and of course the glue is doing most of the work. Right, so how far did we get yesterday? We've got our two cabinets, and as I explained, I've done one with gluing and screwing from the, through the side panels, and another one with more hidden fixings uh, coming in with those pocket holes. I'm gonna paint these before I fit them, and I'm also going to paint them before I put the backs on. It's a lot easier to paint through, and you've only got really a, a simple corner. You can paint it as separate components, but it's, wood glue is best being on bare wood. So that's how we've done it. So next up, we'll be looking at cutting the two back panels for the two cabinets, and also our sliding drawer units that are gonna be halfway up and one at the bottom for the coffee machine. One little tip, if you've got a router, you can make this a little bit oversized uh, when you're doing a cabinet like this, and then you can just whip around with a flush trim router bit, and that'll flush it all up with all the outside edges. Uh, we've ended up with a really square, nice, neat piece anyway, using that jig, so I'm happy to just sand prep this up. Okay, next up, we're going to use the sander. Now, I've never had a cordless sander, and I can see the appeal here. Um, it's just gonna be so easy to work around, especially if you're doing little bits of detail inside the house. Now, of course, you've got the vacuum, but I really wanna test out this filter first. Uh, it looks like it's going to do the business. It almost looks like it's got a little vortex going on in there.
I think that might be my new favorite toy. This, I mean, yes, you can use the vacuum, but most of the time when you're trying to be mobile, that has done an amazing job. And I've got the lighting in here and I can see when there's dust in the air and there's zero at the moment. So um, thumbs up for that. The right, next thing I want to do is build the two sliding shelves that go in here. The top slider I may end up cutting a little bit thinner and putting an oak strip on each side, which will just look a little bit nicer. One little tip, if you're painting a load of panels like this in one go and you want to do both sides at the same time because you're impatient like me, uh, you can use little painter's triangles which will hold them up uh, onto a point. But the other option is just to get some little blocks of wood like this pop a screw through so it's just protruding by a few millimetres and then we'll sit our board onto there once it's painted. And although these tiny pinpricks don't really show up that much at all, we can put our back hidden face and we'll paint that first and flip it upside down and then those don't show at all. While I'm painting away here, I'll touch on a few of the key points about the tools that I'm using because that's really what this video is about. This whole new range of tools from B&Q, the Abawa EXT range and they are all cordless 18 volt tools that run on the same battery system. Uh, they're all brushless as well and the, the battery system that they've got, as I'm finding out, seems to be very, very long lasting in that I've done numerous jobs with numerous tools so far on this project and my first battery has just gone to charge four and five amp, amp, amp hour batteries as well. The range also consists of a number of gardening and landscaping tuck tools as well as the power tools for DIY and woodworking. So uh, I, when, it, when it's drying up a little bit out there, I'm going to test out the grass trimmer, like a strimmer, uh, and it runs on the same battery. And really, if anything can be cut down on, the number of batteries and chargers would be a big win for me because I'm always struggling for socket space and space in general. And if you've only got to remember one brand, then that's going to always be a good thing. So looking forward to trying that out. I think they've got a hedge trimmer, a lawnmower, brush cutter, there's a handful of tools as well as the reciprocating saw which I haven't got but I like the look of because a cordless reciprocating saw becomes this, an amazing pruning tool if you've got trees and fruit trees and you know it's so lightweight you can just uh, take it up with you and it's so much safer than climbing around with a small chainsaw. So my thinking is that it's going to be a lot easier to paint without the back on. Let's see if that works in practice.
yes, it was another painting marathon. It was a 1am finish, I think, in the end. Um, but when you've got kids and pets around in the house, you have to turn nocturnal when it turns to decorating. So I'm using just normal ball bearing, soft closed slides. Now those, uh, they're full extension and they're plenty beefy enough for the machine. Uh, the other thing is, I ideally, if, if we fit them to the bottom, we'd, we'd gain some space in the cupboard. But as soon as you do that and lie them flat, you really compromise on the strength. And some of them are designed for it, but certainly no way near as strong um, as they are when they're in the, the regular position. Of course, these aren't deep enough to, to take the draw sides alone, so we need to install a, a strip along the bottom batten for them to sit onto. the two shelves gluing up. I've put some oak edging on them just to give them a bit of an accent. And whilst I'm doing that, uh, I'm gonna get on and install a small vent here. And really, it's just to give some clearance to the suckers. We're quite confined for the coffee machine. It never gets that hot anyway, and it's not like it's on all day. That gives us a chance to try the new jigsaw. Rather than trying to paint the edge of plywood, which never looks good, uh, I've just used some offcuts of oak either side, just to kind of give it an accent. So this is the tray that pulls out with the coffee machine on, and there'll be an oak front on there as well. Right, this is how I've left it gluing up. It should be dry enough now to take apart. What I've got is I've got my drawer runners sat down on the bottom here, uh, just to space off our timbers and then I put glue on top of the timbers and sat the shelf onto it and I've repeated that with the next section I've brought it down just so I can weigh them all down together so this is shelf one at the top and then this is our bottom shelf so if we take the whole thing out it might make a bit more sense so the plan is that those drawer runners will sit in that space there and when the drawer is pulled out, you'll see the oak at the side and that's what will stop things falling off. That's the upper shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and fit the drawer runners. I did end up using 450 deep drawer runners, so we've got that little bit of space at the back. That also allows us to set it back by our 18 mil drawer front. See if they actually fit in our big holes that we've made. It needs to be flush with the surrounding panelling because that's where we're going to put our trim piece over. So I've managed to squeeze a few little screws through the drawer runner holes, uh, which is hidden those, but I will be putting some uh, kind of heavy duty L brackets just to anchor it top and bottom. And it's also sat on a, a, a batten at the bottom here. Batten at the bottom. See if we can quickly cut all of our trim pieces, get them fixed on, and then we can get painting tonight.
Yes, it was another one o'clock finish, but we got all the paint done. There's little bits of, to touch up and paint and snag. Plus we need to finish our oak. moment of truth we're gonna get the two shelves fitted in So there we go, complete. What a week, it's been a pretty full on project. And when I started out, I didn't mean for all of this to happen. It turned into a bit of a kitchen renovation. Everything worked pretty much as planned. Uh, and we still got access to everything we needed to as far as uh, topping up the beans, getting to the tank uh, and cleaning the machine, which is important. I didn't want to have to lift out the machine. So we've got the ability to do all the, the normal stuff there. Really pleased with how the storage bit came out as well. Plenty space there and enough to keep us going on those long caffeine fueled DIY nights. Now this bit was a bit of an afterthought, but I managed to squeeze both of those original units within the second cabinet down here. I've picked up some really nice rustic oak. And I'll be building two door fronts for that in the future. And we've even managed to find space for a chopping board or two down the middle there. Well, there we go. I think we definitely deserve a coffee or two or 10 after all that. Um, it worked out really well, but it was uh, it was a lot of work to get there. But thank you to B&Q and Abara Tools for their part in this. Remember, it's a paid collaboration with them, so full disclosure there, but really keen to see how those tools pan out. Um, and I'll be putting a link down below so you can head over there and see what's available because we only scratched the surface as far as the range that they've got. I kind of got a taste for doing a bit more of the kitchen renovations now, so I think we'll be doing some micro renovations uh, now the baby's on the way, and we'll be kind of doing a bit of tiling and little tweaks around here, so stay tuned and subscribe for more of those videos. But that's it, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.